a lot of people know you from Empire. Now, how did you actually get into that role? I, uh, my friend from high school, he called me with his, this role that he knew of, and um, he told me, you know, it would really be cool if you could audition, because his mom is this, uh, the casting director for Lee Daniels, and um, so he had like first position on knowing like what the role was about, and he told me the whole breakdown, and I went, not, I auditioned like two days later, uh, and that's how it all started. Like, describe how your audition was. I actually, Tiana at first was going to be like a rapper slash um, singer. So I had to rap as well as sing and uh, cite my lines, of course. Um, and then it was really cool because I, I like practiced this Nicki Minaj like rap and went all out for it. <laughs> I committed to being a rapper, but that yeah, that's how the audition went. It was great. Which, uh, which Nicki Minaj song was it? Um, it was like one of her old songs on her mixtape. Um, oh God, what was it? I think it was like Itty Bitty, Itty Bitty Piggy or something like that. It's one of the old ones. Okay. All right. So you came in, you rapped. Yeah. You sang also though. Yeah. Yeah. I sang and I, and I cited my lines. Um, and I did it like a few different ways, which is really cool because in like an audition process, you don't always get to do it like you know, again and again. So I got to do it a couple of different ways and, you know, bringing out the character different ways. And um, they sent the, the video, the, the tape to um, production and to Lee Daniels. And I got a call back from that like a couple of days after that. Now, I mean, prior to that, were you singing? Were you taking acting lessons? Anything else like that? Yeah, I've actually been singing and acting since I was like 11. So it's something that I've been wanting to do forever. Yeah. Okay, and had you done anything, you know, notable before this that, that we may have heard about? No, just a lot of independent stuff and um, some of my own original music and stuff like that. Uh, I'd been working on like all through high school and things like that. Okay, so this was literally your big break. Literally big break, yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So you get the role and how long after you, they told you that you got the role did they actually start filming? Wow, so I got the role maybe two weeks before I flew to Chicago, honestly. And within that time, I had to get an agent and also, um, you know, do all the paperwork for it. So I was out in Chicago like within two weeks. You get the role, two weeks later, you start filming. You know, what, what really struck you, you know, and this is like your first major big budget production, you know, what were you really going through in those first few days? Um, like, um, it was kind of like when you go somewhere for the first time, it's like culture shock. So I was thrown into like this big, huge production that I've only seen like on movies while, you know, in like scenes where they're shooting a movie. And, um, also with so many big celebrities that I've been watching since, you know, I was just growing up. So being thrown in it so fast was, was very um, shocking. And uh, people always ask me, you know, how did you feel? And I'm like, I don't know. Like I was just <laughs> trying to do the best I could with so many professionals. But it was so great because I got so much help from everyone. So Really? So give me an example of how like some of the, the more, you know, older actors would help you. Yeah, um, on set, just like with lines or just bringing out certain things. I know Mal Malik Yoba helped me out a lot, like pulled me aside and we did, we ran lines for a while and things like that. Um, also, another person that really uh, spoke to me was Terrence and he uh, came to me and he told me because he knew a scene that I was about to do with Hakeem um, <laughs> and he told me, you know, kill it and don't think about it and just go for it. So those like words of motivation and encouragement like really helped. Um, being on set. When it comes to a new show, a lot of times, you know, a lot of money gets spent on these shows. You create like a really expensive pilot and the show sometimes doesn't come out at all, you know, much less comes out and then the ratings aren't good. It gets canceled and so forth. You know, when you guys were working on the show, did you have any idea about how big it was going to be? I knew that it would be big and it would be noticed because of Terrence Howard and Malik Yoba. Um, um, you know, Taraji P. Henson. So I knew that it would be looked at and I knew 
that, you know, it would be big. But, I mean, breaking records and being, like, the number one show on Fox since, like, 20 years or some odd, I mean, it was nothing that I would have expected, especially not for my first thing. So definitely um, exceeded all my expectations. Well, you know, the, the thing about Empire is that a lot of people were surprised that it did so well. Yeah. You know, and having a primarily black cast. There was a, definitely a stigma in Hollywood before where it's like, well, this is just a black show. It's not going to do very well. It's going to have a small audience and it's not going to have a big budget. And, you know, it's not going to cross over into the mainstream. But Empire kind of broke all that. Why do you think that is? I just think it's so relatable in so many different ways. It's not only just um, black TV. It, 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 it carries over to so many different ethnicities and backgrounds and families um, and most importantly because the deal with you know Lucius and his sons and his ex-wife is something that people go through every day no matter what color you are or where you come from um, also it's just so glamorous so it appeal it's appealing to um, a lot of viewers at home uh, watching so it's really cool to see something like that um, crossover definitely well you know I think the, the one thing that really stands out with this with this show that I think most other shows fall flat on is that when you have either a show or a movie about music and it's not like based on actual musicians right that most times the music is sort of like eh, yeah this is okay you know the songs are kind of lackluster but, but you guys actually had Timberland as the the musical director and it seemed like the music on Empire really surpassed everyone's expectations. Yeah, I mean, having Timberland be a part of, I think being a part of the project really opened up a lot of ears and eyes to even watching because people love Timberland. He's a household name. So um, him being a part of it and Jim Beans and working with them would just been an awesome process. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think it's just something so familiar for people, especially in, in urban or pop music. Um, to hear Timbaland's name, you, I think it's an automatic spark to want to watch it and to want to see what the music's like. How much interaction do you actually have with Timbaland? Um, a few times, but I did, I did record mostly with Jim Beans. Um, uh, but they're amazing together and, and their stuff is so similar. Um, but both of their styles are just some, something I've been growing up on, uh, Timberland and Missy and uh, everyone like that. So being able to just be in the presence and being able to record on some of their tracks is just like an honor. What do you think, like when you look at all the songs that, that, that were done on Empire last season, what do you think is your all-time favorite song from the show? My favorite song would have to be You're So Beautiful. It was something that grew on me. Um, actually, so it's it, it's actually like turned out to be like one of my favorite songs from the first season. Uh, I thought you were gonna say drip drop, but I guess that that's not your favorite. Drip drop is one of those songs where you're like ah, but you keep singing it. I get like noticed for drip drop more than my own name, so that's cool. But I like you're so beautiful better. <laughs> it, you know, it, it's funny like when, when drip drop first, you know came out on the show yeah like people absolutely absolutely murdered the song like like on social media it was just a bloodbath but like i know that when he goes and performs it when he does like you know club appearances or whatever people like lose their mind when he does it i know it's like one of those songs like like you said like you hate it but you hate why you like it and it's just so catchy and it's like it's one of those songs that are just really catchy and simple um, and it's just more about the music that's playing uh, and the feeling that you get from it but yeah it's funny I get noticed for drip drop they're like oh my gosh and all they say is drip drop drip drippity drop and I'm like oh <laughs> a name would be nice but it's cool <laughs> so that, that kind of bothers you a little bit being known as a drip drop girl no it's cool it's cool it's all it's all fun and games but because um, I know like I loved the segment the actual scene was really cool and like what they did with the music video in the um, in the scene was like dope so it's cool to be a part of it and people make jokes about it all the time but it's, it's still played like whenever I go somewhere they play it it's no comparison man ODB is in a class by itself. He can't, he don't even compare to us. Like he said, his, his style don't have no father. 
the whole dirty bastard of it right there. He created his own style. So. He would probably get beat for a week straight. He couldn't even <laughs> walk through Long Beach. It just, he'd be like a walking pinata. He'd just get beat every quarter he turned. 